شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنَّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ Who's gone to a desi party before? 
Okay, we've got a good hand going to desi parties. Now see, when you go to a desi party, there are three classes of people. They're the youth, they're usually playing NBA 2K, or they're playing video games downstairs, they're playing basketball outside. There are the uncles who, if you ever go sit with the uncles, you know, you have a Pakistani uncle, you have a Bangladeshi uncle, an Indian uncle, and each one is like, my country has the very first politics, you know? That's what they're talking about the whole time. No, it's, it's funny, but it's true. But then you go to the aunties and you go to the sisters, and unfortunately, the reality of that aspect of our ummah, and I'm not just saying it's excluded to, your, to the sisters, but if you ever go and listen to what they're talking about, for a, a, a large part of the reality is that, you know, you go to them and they're talking about what the other sister did. Did you see what his mother did? Did you see what she was wearing at the mall the other day? And this is, this is, act, this is actually the truth. You don't need my testimony for it. Just go to a Desi Dawah yourself, go to any party yourself. And you see, this is the reality, and unfortunately, this has been passed down to our youth. It's been passed down to the ones of us that are coming to attend this halaqa. Now, alhamdulillah, a lot of us have iPhones or smartphones. These are great aspects of technology, and we're really allowed to benefit from them. But one of the things that makes this a great fitna, especially in the realm of backbiting, is, you know, whenever you have an angry conversation with your friend, and I'm sure that sometimes you get mad at your friend, here's what you do. You want your other friend to get on your side. He hears that you're fighting. Or sisters, your friend, you hear that you and one of your friends are in a fight. So here's what you do. Oh my God, did you see what she said to me? You pull up your text message conversation, and you show it to them. Now you see, this right here is even backbiting. Even this small act of showing a conversation, taking a screenshot and sending it to people. And you know, I've, I've, received, text me I've received messages like this, and I've, you know, unfortunately, at some point, I've sent messages like this, and you, it's a reality, it's a stark reality. So what's the harm? Why is backbiting so people? I'll give you one incident, inshallah, I'm done. Why is this so counterintuitive to the concept of loving your brother for the sake of Allah, or loving your sister for the sake of Allah? You see, at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he, you know, as soon as he made the hijrah, there was a big fitna that came up, and that was a fitna surrounding the life of his wife, Aisha radiallahu anha. Now we all know this very famous incident that some of the hypocrites of the time started making rumors, and I can't even repeat those rumors because they were so vile and so disgusting. They started saying horrible things about our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha, and they said these things. And unfortunately, it caused such a great fitna amongst the Muslims. It caused such great fitna that Abu Bakr as Siddiq, we all know the famous incident where he didn't give his family member the money until the commandment came down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to not, get, to not uh, to deprive him of the money. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not make a verdict about this until the ayats came down upon him. And he is rahmatun lil alameen, he is the mercy to mankind. This is the great fitna that was caused because of the slander and the backbiting that was caused by a few hypocrites. This is the evil of backbiting, and you will see it in society today, that when you go and you talk about your brother or your sister against them, or you say something against them, and you, just one little side note, you know, sometimes we have this notion that, well, I would say it to their face, and you know, that doesn't make it any less backbiting. That also makes you a terrible human being. So, I want you to keep in mind that as we listen to the next talk, and I really want to cut down my time, as we listen to the next talk given by Shaykh Abdul Bar Yahya, we need to realize that one aspect of loving our brothers is hiding his sins. Because there will be a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your sins. And if you spent your life exposing other people's sins, then guess what? Allah will expose your sins on that day. But if you make an effort, and this is, you know, this is. Uh, this is part of our tradition, this is part of something that we actually believe in our faith. If you hide your brother's or your sister's sin is Islam, and you don't back to it, then on that day, on the day of judgment, Allah will put a barda, He will put a veil between you and the rest of mankind, and He will judge you privately. This is the mercy Allah gives us for loving our brothers. Jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In alhamdulillah, نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون 
يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله <coughs> Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam went through many trials and tribulations. His own brothers threw him into a well. And from that well, he was taken out and brought to the palace. And from the palace, he was thrown into prison. And when he was taken out of prison, he became the most influential person in all of Egypt and the surrounding areas also. His brothers tried to get rid of him. In fact, they even wanted to kill him. But when they took him out of the well, or when, they came, when he came out of the well, and he ended up in the palace, and his brothers came, his brothers came begging for their livelihood and for food. And he had the upper hand while they were coming as beggars. He could have avenged what they did to him. But Prophet Yusuf السلام, was not like that. He was, he was a prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was very beloved to his father. He was separated from his father for almost a lifetime until his father became very feeble and old. And then when his brothers came, he forgave them. Not only did he forgive them, but his forgiveness is a lesson for all of us. He had the opportunity to do whatever he wanted with his brothers, for the tides changed at the end. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the end of the surah, the last few scenes, from reading it, we will see, inshallah, the mental state of a believer, of a mu'min, of someone who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of someone who loves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of someone who forgives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي 
the great favor of Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out of prison. But many of us, sometimes we have disagreements amongst our spouses, right, our husband, uh, between husband and wife. And then you say, yeah, I forgive you. You forgive, yeah, you say you forgive them, right? And then when something happens again, you say you forgave them. When something happens again, remember when you did such and such in that day? But I thought you said you forgave. Oh, but that was before. <laughs> All right. You've tried it, you mention it again, you bring it again. Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, did not want to hurt the feelings of his brothers. He didn't even want to mention that incident. In fact, he mentioned an incident that they had no connection with, which was him entering the prison. So he, he could have mentioned coming out of the well. And, all. and that was the beginning of everything. But he didn't want to do that. And that's something that's called loving for the sake of Allah and forgiving for the sake of Allah. And inshallah, I know you've been sitting here for a little bit. So I'd like to, inshallah, do a, maybe just a, I know it's Friday, I mean Saturday, after, Saturday afternoon, and maybe some of us have been tired, maybe we went shopping or whatever we did in the morning. I would like everybody, inshallah, to stand up. We want to just uh, put some energy in the, into the room a little bit. We're going to do a breathing exercise, okay? So how are we going to do this breathing exercise? What I'm going to do, you probably heard from the beginning that I was, uh, um, I was uh, born in Vietnam, right? So I'm going to practice, I'm going to let you guys start counting in Vietnamese, we'll teach you to count in Vietnamese. But we're going to do, we're not going to do jumping jacks, jumping jacks are not too sister friendly. We're going to do, we're going to do marching jacks, okay? Well, we're going to do marching jacks and we're going to count in Vietnamese. And the reason is so that we can, inshallah, have a little bit more energy, put a little more energy in this room, okay? And uh, after that, we're going to do a quick breathing exercise. So this is just to rejuvenate uh, the energy, inshallah. So what we're going to do first, okay. let me raise this up a little bit. <clears throat> I want you guys, I want you guys to count with me. Vietnamese is a tonal language, okay? Um, you guys probably, when you saw me, you probably thought I was Korean or something like that. <laughs> and maybe when I'm standing up here, then do the, what do you call it? What's that dance? Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style? Yeah, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> By the way, you know, I was, uh, I was flying from Korea to Seattle. Um, I went to Vietnam, flew from Korea to Seattle. And I was in the seat, right? The whole, I mean, the whole row. Every, first of all, the whole row had Asians. Yeah, the whole row, because you know, it's one Asia, right? And the whole row had Asians. Everybody was Asian. They went to one person, the, you know, the, the stewardess speaks the English to that, the first person on the left, and then second person English, and then they look at me and they speak Korean. <laughs> and I, I said, okay, I, I just pointed to whatever I wanted, right? Uh, next time, another person came, and they spoke English to that person, English, but I knew what they were saying because they were saying the same thing. I thought maybe, you know, I couldn't understand Korean. But every time they came to me, they spoke Korean to me. Well, you guys, I look Korean or something. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to count Vietnamese. Vietnamese is a tonal language. You know what a tonal language is? A tonal language is not like English, okay? A tonal language is a language in which if you were to change just the tone, you know, the, the pitch or the tone, it changes the meaning. Like for us, when we say go, 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 it's always the same thing, same thing right? But when Vietnamese, if you say, for example, you say, ma, Ma means mother, okay? You say ma. You say ma, that means monster. You don't want to call your mother monster, okay? Uh, and you say ma, that means horse. You don't want to call a horse neither. Do you understand? Any tone, any change in the tone changes the, 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 mean, the mean, total meaning of the word. Uh, totally. So we're going to count to five, and then I'm going to count to ten. I want you guys to do this, okay? I want you guys to, I'm going to do it twice, once, and then. See if you guys can remember it, okay? One to five first, okay? Remember the tone, okay? So you gotta say it. If I raise the tone, you gotta say it the tone that way. Otherwise, you're gonna be calling people like bad words or something like that. <laughs> you don't even okay, remember we're gonna do marching jacks, okay? Everybody? Just to five, okay? Ready? Every march. Ready? Go ahead. Start marching. Mo. 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 Hi. 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 Ba. 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 Bo. 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 Now. Um. You guys got that? You're on your own now. Ready? Set. You got it? Got it? Ready? Set? Go.
have it. Ready? Just five. I'm going to do one time, but you got to memorize it, okay? The next time. Ready? Set. March. Mo. Mo. Hi. Hi. Ba. Ba. Fu. Fu. No. No. Got it? Yes. I hope you guys got it. Ready? Let's go, Mark. You're on your own. Go. Mo. Mo. Hi. Ba. Ba. Okay, so we got a like it. Okay, so we make standing. We're now going to do a breathing exercise quickly, okay? And, and I, I don't listen, guys, okay? I don't want anyone coming to me after this and say this is Vidas. I get all kinds of things afterwards, man. <laughs> all right, what we're going to do is just bring the exercise to get us to, to get us just, uh, just our energy go to it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have, remember, you know, a marathon runner? Or a cross country runner? Or even a track runner? After, that, after they finish running, where do they put their hands? On their head. On their head, right? Why do they do that? On the heart rate. Do they open up their lungs? Mm. Right? Because he's actually they're trying to open up their elbows, right? You spread out their elbows so that the lungs will open up. So what I'm not I'm not gonna tell you put on your head, just your elbows up and it's good enough. And you guys I hear you guys in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee you guys are pretty cool. Right? I know the Packers are not that cool, they lost the Seahawks, but you know it's that cool. Oh. <laughs> Always tired of like Alright, everybody. A thumbs up, you guys are cool, man. Cheese heads are always cool, man. Right? Cheese heads are always cool. Alright. I want you guys to put your thumbs up, okay? What I'm going to do is this, okay? I'm gonna tell you to breathe in and then breathe out. You're gonna breathe through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. But this is the trick. On the third breather, when you breathe out, I want you to say yeah as loud as you can. Okay? I mean I want you to say yeah so loud that you're gonna blow this roof, but I mean, like, most of them should be saying something. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? You know? Uh, you know, I just say it really loud, okay? Wait, like, I'm not thinking about blowing anything up, okay? Just forget what you said, okay? We're not doing any of that. I just want you to say, yeah, really loud. As loud as you can, okay? Ready? Elbows out. Thumbs up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. This is it right here. Breathe in. Yeah! yeah. 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 Everybody said that. You guys are awesome. MashaAllah. You guys are awesome. Is that loud? All right. Imagine if they said Emmy and like Jamal. All right. Oh, man. So. And, um. We were speaking about Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and how he forgave and as Muslims that's how we that's how we should be. Because these are the characteristics of the people of Jannah. The people of Jannah they love each other. And it's the first step to paradise is actually, you know, to to learn to love each other. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith so a Muslim, he said, Let us pull the Jannah to have to be You will not enter paradise until you have faith, until you believe. And you will not believe until you learn to love each other. You will not have faith until you learn to love each other. So if you have this hatred in your heart for everybody and so forth, that's faith will not enter your heart with that kind of hatred. You have to learn to love each other. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ مَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً إِنَّ مَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Which means the believers are brothers of each other. So you must have that brotherhood and that sisterhood. That's a sign of iman. That's the definition of a brotherhood. Is to have that love for each other. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُ You will not have faith until you love each other. أَفَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ would you like me to show you something? That if you were to do it, you would love each other? He said, Afshu salam. He said, spread salams amongst yourself. Spread the salams. Give the salams. You know, so that means, you know what that means? That means the salams, giving the salams, is your first step to get together. Because it will build that love. And most of us, unfortunately, and amongst the signs of the day of judgment, the Prophet said, in the salam al Amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment is that the salams will be for ma'rifah. Which means for people you know only or it can mean for something that you need to know. That's why 
When somebody gives you salams, they say, Assalamu alaikum. Do you know uh, where the closest halal restaurant is? <laughs> you wouldn't give salams if you already knew where the closest halal restaurant was to that person. So you're not giving salams as a form of worship, an act of that, that you're trying to seek pleasure from Allah. No, you're, seeking, you're giving salams not for the sake of Allah. You're giving salams just to get his attention so you can ask him, where's the closest halal restaurant? He says, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Do you know where the keys were that, that were here? Did you see anybody take them? Like if you didn't lose those keys, you wouldn't give salams to that brother. This is amongst the signs of the day of judgment, and this is not the etiquettes and the manners and the characteristics of a true believer. You give salams to those you know and those you don't know, and you look for opportunity to give salams. And I want you to give a warm salam to the point where even if you don't know that person, the person says, do I know you from before? <laughs> like, give salams and seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because every time you say assalamu alaikum, that's 10 rewards. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, that's 20 rewards. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, that's 30 rewards. You're getting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it strengthens your the bonds of brotherhood. Because believe it or not, the next time you see that person, whether it be in, 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 the shop, in the supermarket or in the streets or anywhere else, it's like there's a bond that was built that was strengthened while you were at the masjid when you gave salams to that brother at the masjid or at the gathering or at the picnic or whatever it is. Give salams and give a warm salams and you'll start building that love for each other. And so you have, we have to learn to love each other. And so how can we build that love? And what can we do to build that love? And what is that love for the sake of Allah? Most people when they say, somebody says, I, say, oh, I love you for the sake of Allah. Or you say to your wife, I love you for the sake of Allah. Then your wife looks at you, no, you love me, love, love. No. Not love for the sake of Allah. But what you don't realize is the greatest love of all is the love for the sake of Allah. The greatest love of all is the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's the strongest love because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna awthaqa awthaqa al-ura al-iman awthaqa ura al-iman al-hubbu fi Allahi wa al-bughdu fi Allah Indeed the strongest bond of iman inna awthaq ura al-iman is al-hubbu fi Allah is loving for the sake of Allah and disliking for the sake of Allah. That's the strongest. Do you know why that is the strongest? Because it is the most consistent. And it is that which brings people together during all situations and all cases. And it is not conditional. And it is not based on a person's, a per, based on the person's mood. It's not based on your mood. And it doesn't change with the change of your mood. It remains consistent. Why does it remain consistent? Let me give you an example. A husband. A husband. If a husband loves his wife, that love love that we talked about, there will come a time when that love love becomes love and sometimes hate. And sometimes love, but not right now. I love you, but you know what? Not right now. <laughs> right? Sometimes you get angry, and of course, every relationship you're going to have problems, or you're going to have arguments, and so forth. So, when that happens, maybe you used to help out with the chores in the house, and you come home, you say, yeah, she doesn't deserve it anymore, man. Just going to sit down and watch the, and watch the, the Packers lose to the Seahawks. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So, he said, I'm going to sit down on the couch. You know, he's watch TV, right? She don't deserve... No, he, maybe he used to, like, wash the dishes once in a while, right? He says, but she doesn't deserve it anymore. Because she, she, yeah, well, look what she did. She doesn't appreciate or anything like that. Then it ends up, you have been having a bigger problem. What's the bigger problem? Okay, what happens is... Now, now the wife comes over and she says, well, you know, you're not the same anymore, right? 
you know, you used to help out washing. When you see the dishes in the sink, you used to help out also. Now you don't help anymore, huh? You don't love me anymore. And then you're like, I'm going to talk to you. Like, right now you have the problem gets worse. But when somebody loves for the sake of Allah, it doesn't change with the person's mood. And it's not conditional. So the husband who loves his wife for the sake of Allah, he loves his wife. And Allah subhanahu is the one that puts that love in the person's heart. He comes home. Maybe he's not happy with what, had, what just happened maybe that day. And he's not, he's not really happy with his wife, right? And he used to you know, help out with the dishes and everything like that. And he comes, comes to this house. What does he do? He continues to wash the dishes. Why does he continue to wash the dishes? Here's what he's thinking. He comes into the house and he says, you know, I'm going to be the best Muslim I can. I love my wife for the sake of Allah. Right? You love your wife for the sake of Allah. You want to be the best Muslim you can be. And how can you be the best Muslim you can be? By following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِنِسَاءِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِنِسَاءِ The best of you are the best towards your woman. Meaning the best of you are the best towards your daughters, towards your wives, towards your mothers. Those are the best of you. You want to be the best Muslim you can be? Your, your character is, and your excellence is dependent upon how you treat the woman in your family. Your nobility is based upon that as a, as a Muslim. You want to be the best Muslim you can be. So you're going to be kind to your wife. Being a, you know what? The Prophet Sallallahu was very kind to his wife. He said, the best of you, the best towards your woman. You know what? And what did he used to do? When he was asked by, when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked by some of the tabi'i about the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he first, when he would enter his house, when he was at home, what did he do? He used to be at the service of his of his wives. And so he used to help them out. So you come into the house and you continue to be, even though you're not mad at the, you're, you, even though you're mad at your wife, even though the husband is mad at his wife, he will say, you know what, I'm going to try to be the best Muslim I can be. Maybe she doesn't deserve, but I'm going to do all of this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm seeking the reward from Allah, whether she appreciates or not, Allah knows. Right? Allah knows. And so, you continue to be the best person that you can be, and then you go and continue to wash the dishes, and your wife is thinking, oh man, he's still, still good? What kind of, well, well, you know, he's, he's mad at me, but at the same time, look, he's still helping with the chores. And so then it starts to bring things back together again. I have another story also, you know, I live in Seattle, it's the largest Somali community over there. And, and you know, Somalis are not too much into fish. They don't eat fish too much, okay? Or seafood in general. And they definitely don't eat raw fish. Okay? Which means sushi, okay? I love sushi, okay? I love sushi. I remember, you know, my wife sometimes makes you makes sushi also. And so she has a, she had a friend over, right? And then so this sister, she's married. She wants to make sushi because she likes sushi. She says, you know what? That was really good the first time she ate it, but she really liked it. And she wanted to surprise her husband. <laughs> and so she spends about four hours cooking and preparing to try to make her husband happy. He's at work. He comes back from work tired. Opens the door and he's looking for dinner, right? Food. He's looking for food. He's really hungry. And so she, she brings this, right, this platter that has sushi on it. And he looks. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, what is this? <laughs> sushi. What is sushi? Uh, it's rice with fish, but it's still pink. <laughs> And he touches it. Is this cooked? He says, no, but put it in the sauce, it's really good. Fish, raw fish, you expect, I don't even eat fish. <laughs> and he's so hungry, you know, you know when you're hungry, you get angry quickly. He starts yelling at her, and he doesn't realize she has spent half the day trying to make him happy. 
How do you think she feels? If she did this just for his sake, what do you think she's going to say? She's going to say, forget you. <laughs> I will never, ever make something special again for you. He's looking for his rice and bananas. <laughs>
If you get to that level, you're passing the, the, the praiseworthy level, is loving for your brother more than what you even love for yourself. And that's why in order for you to complete Iman, you have to love for the sake of Allah, because that's what loving for the sake of Allah means. That you want, you're sacrificing for your, for your brothers and your sisters. And how do we increase that? What are some things that we can do to increase the love? First thing, the Prophet ﷺ, when he first arrived in, in Medina, when he came to Medina, he came not as a refugee. He came as a leader. Based on the Treaty of Aqaba, the second Treaty of Aqaba, the second Pledge of Aqaba, they agreed to protect the Prophet And he came so that he came not as a refugee but to be their leader. And so when the Messenger of Allah arrived as the leader of this new state, he gave his he gave his inaugural speech. Now, what was his inaugural speech? As in, the inaugural speech is going to be very important. That's why you, you, you know when Obama first became president the first time. Remember when he did his inaugural speech? It was something very special, right? In terms of you know the the, the, the media attention and everything, people went and they you know millions in that frozen weather, in that cold, they want to hear the inaugural speech because it's going to lay the foundation for the next four years, right? So what was the inaugural speech of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he went to Medina, when he first arrived? We get that from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Salam, he said, the first thing I heard from the mouth of the Prophet وسلم, when he arrived in Medina was, he said, Ayyuhannas, O people, O people, after salam, give salam. Remember we showed you how important that was. Because that's the beginning of building that relationship. After salam, wa aqaim al and also give, I mean, not play time is give food. We're not just talking about the poor. Just give gifts to each other. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he said, He said, when you make any soup or broth or any food that has broth in it, then increase the broth of it. And then to give some to your neighbors. Give some to your neighbors. And the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they used to bring food to the Prophet ﷺ. They used to exchange gifts. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Tahadu, tahabu. Exchange gifts and you love each other. And that is why in Islam we don't exchange gifts during Eid. Or only during Eid or during certain occasions. No. It is a continuous thing for us at all times. And that is why during, you know, in this country, if you were to ask anyone in this country, what is the most stressful time of the year for you, what are they going to say? The holidays. Hey, isn't this supposed to be a time of happiness and joy? But when you really ask him, what's the most stressful time of the year, I mean, what's the saddest time of the year for you? The holidays. I mean, they're just happy, but these are smiles in their faces and their hearts are sad. That's reality. Why? Even though they're exchanging gifts, isn't that supposed to build up? No. The reason why it doesn't is because they're expecting it. <laughs> Do you understand? And so they might receive a gift, and then it might be worth hundreds of dollars, and they open it up, and it's like, <laughs> thank you very much. I bought you know, like they're inside, they're burning. Because they wanted something else, but they spent so much more, and their brother just gave this little thing. But you know what? If that little thing right there, would, if they were to receive that at any other time of the year, they would be so happy. But during the holidays, they're not happy receiving that. Why? Because they're expecting 
So we as Muslims, we should exchange gifts. And I'm not talking about buying gold and buy a diamond ring for your, your wife every single day, though. No. Right? Or, you know, buying every, every month or so and so forth. No, you don't have to. Let me give you a, uh, um, some advice, inshallah, for the brothers and sisters. It's not about diamond rings, okay? It's about scoring points. So even when you come home with a rose, she'll remember that. People might forget what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. They will always remember that. And the important part is the Prophet said to have to have to give exchange gifts and you love each other. And you don't have to buy something expensive, but I want you to, to make this a consistent habit. So if we want you to go to the store, Every time you go to the store, if you buy something for yourself, you think it's like worthy of giving somebody, you know, like, you know, like not worthy in the sense of like it's expensive, no. If you can, you can give somebody, even if it's just a candy bar, a chocolate bar. Let's say a candy bar, it's on sale three for one dollar, okay? <laughs> like you got three for one dollar, and you come home, you know, and you see your sister, and you put it in a nice, wrap, you know, wrap it up really nicely, and so I just want to give you a gift. And she takes it, and she says, what is this for? And you tell her, I love you, sister. Because I love it. It costs you 33 cents. <laughs> Do you understand? But I swear she will love you. And she will be so happy because she was not expecting anything from you at all. Just a candy bar. You wrapped it up nicely and you gave it to her. And she'll be so happy. And you'll see that you'll increase the love in your family. The next time you go to the store, think about your mother. Next time you go, your cousin. Next time, your aunt. Next time, your uncle. But make it consistent. You come to your aunt's house and you say, Auntie, I have a present for you. And you give her this box. And you might, you know, just like a box of maybe chocolate or anything else, you know, or, or anything else that she might, you know, it, might, it doesn't have to be super expensive or anything like that. But she will remember. She might forget the gift because you think she ate it all. And it might be just, but you know what? The way that you made her feel, she feels so special that so she will treat you with, she will treat you really special also. And you increase that love. Try to do that consistently and you'll see that your family, the relationship between you and your family will be totally changed. It will improve a million, a thousand fold. But do it consistently. And that's, when you're consistently doing that, you're, why are you doing this? You're doing this to please Allah. And that's why when you cook something, bring some food and give to your neighbors. Bring some food and give to your aunt. Do something extra. Those are just little things you can do to increase the love. He said, أَفْشُ السَّلَامُ وَأَقْلَمُ الْقَعَامُ وَسِلُ الْأَرْحَامُ And enjoy relations. That's another thing. Enjoy relations. Building your relationship between you and your family members. That's first and foremost. Especially with your parents. With your mother. With your father. You know the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked, who has more right? Who has more right for my for my good treatment? What did the Prophet ﷺ say when he was asked that? He said, Your mother. And then the companion said, Thumma man. And then after that, who? Who? And he said, What did he say again? Your mother. And then he was asked, then who? What did he say? Your mother, three times, and then he said, father. your father. You know if this were an Olympic race, the, father, the mother would have gotten the gold, the silver, and the bronze. And the father would have gone home crying. <laughs> <laughs> the podium is all for the mother. The podium is all for herself. Gold, silver, and bronze. And so enjoy relations, and the most important people you should enjoy relations with are your parents, and the people in your family who are close. And then of course, with your aunts and uncles, your cousins and so forth. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Know of your lineage so that you can enjoy those relations. And in fact, you will not enter Jannah if you don't enjoy relations. You will not enter Jannah if you don't enjoy relations. That's how important enjoying relations and loving for the sake of Allah is. And remember, when there's any problem that you might have, 
Why? Because the Prophet of course, the proof for that is the Prophet said, لا يدخل الجنة قاطر. A person who enter, who a person who, who cuts relations will not enter Jannah. Hadith in Sahih Bukhari. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also mentioned that when a person is front of, when he, when the person is in, across, crossing the sirat, you know that bridge over Jahannam. When he's crossing over, you're not going to be able to cross it because you are good at, you know, acrobatics or you work for the circus. No. It is your deeds. And you know, when, when a person crosses that little, what they call it, the, that string, uh, that, that rope that they walk on? Tight rope. Right on that tight rope, when they're walking on that tight rope, what do they have? What are they carrying? A big pole to balance because you need that. And so when you're crossing the surah, you need the balance also. You need something to balance you. Do you know what those two, you know the two things that need to balance you for? What? Do you know what they are? The Prophet sallallahu said, al amanatu wa rahim It will come and it will be that which will balance you. Al-amana, which is trustworthiness, trust, and al rahim And so if people can't trust you, you're not going to enter Jannah. You don't have that trustworthiness. La imanata, la amanata, la. A person does not have iman if he doesn't have amana. He doesn't have the trust. People can't trust him. And also, the rahim will come. Your relations. It's how you enjoy relations. That will come. And do you know what enjoying relations is? Enjoying relations is not being kind to someone who is kind to you. No. A companion came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I have an uncle who is always nice to, kind to, but he always treats me, treats me badly. He said, what should I do? And so the Prophet said, he said, that's, called, that's what you call enjoining relations. That's what you call enjoining relations. And so, what, what time is it? Ten minutes. Okay, I just want to know. I just want to know how much time because I have a bad reputation in Seattle. You know, they say, never give a woman a telephone or stand up the body of my phone. <laughs> that's what they say at least. I don't want that reputation to bother me. You're walking. So, when a person... You know, when, a, when a person loves another person, right, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when you truly feel the sweetness of the Iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Three things if a person can have it, will have it, he will taste the sweetness of Iman. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in that, number one, that the Prophet, Allah and His Messenger, become more beloved to you than anyone. And then, why you hit the love? La yuhibbuhu illa lillah. He said, and you hit, you love a person for that person loves another person. He doesn't love him except for the for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And also, when you love somebody, when you love somebody, tell them. Okay. Sometimes you might be, hey, you know, I'm shy and so forth. No, the Prophet وسلم, said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجُلْ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُفِّرُ أَنْهُ يُحِبُّ He said, أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّ And he said, if someone loves someone, if a, if a man loves another person for the sake, you know, then let him tell them. So you tell them that you love them for the sake of love. You tell them. So make sure you do that. And this is something that the Prophet وسلم, ordered us to do. When you love someone, you tell them that you love them, that you love that person. And if you do so, it is a sign and then the reward is very, very great. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ said that he will be amongst the seven people who will be shaded on the day of judgment, on the day in which there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so seven of those people, one of the, one of the seven, the Prophet ﷺ said, Rajulani tahabba fillah wa tafarraqa alayhi. He said, two people who love each other for the sake of Allah, they come together for the sake of Allah, and they separate for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love those who will love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, you will earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you love each other for the sake of Allah. And that's what we need to do. We need to earn the love of Allah. Because that's the only way to enter paradise, is to earn the mercy of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, وَجَبَتْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Hadith Qudsi, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّةِ لِلْمُتَحَابِينَ فِيَّ وَالْمُتَجَارِسِينَ فِيَّ He said, Allah the, it's mandatory upon him. And he will receive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who loves each other, who sit with each other, and also mutazawirina fiyya, those who visit each other for the sake of Allah, and those who mutazawirina fiyya, those who sacrifice uh, with each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
he mentioned that if you love, if two people love each other for the sake of Allah, the one who loves more is the one who is more beloved to Allah subhanahu of the two. The one who loves more is the one who is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu said in hadith from Ibn Darda, radiallahu anhu, he said, ma min rajulayn yatahabba fillah illa kana ahabbuhuma ila Allah ashadduhuma hubba. Me ashadduhuma hubba li sahibi. He said, two people, ma min rajulayn, two people that love each other for the sake of Allah. There are, no, there are no two people who love each other for the sake of Allah except that the one who loves the other more is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning if you love your brother more than he loves you, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you more than he loves the other brother. So the more you love the other brother, the more the greater the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowed upon you also. Allah loves you more also. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of those who love, who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person loves each other, when, when you love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, as I mentioned, this, is, this will help us work with each other. Why? Because you will not be able to build a masjid like this unless you come together. And you can't come together if you don't love each other. And if you can't love each other, then you're not going to facilitate the love of each other. Or you're not going to facilitate the way to increase our iman. And so, remember at the beginning, at the very beginning, I spoke about Prophet Yusuf and how he forgave his brother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ وَسَارِعُوا Vie with each other and be quick in seeking the forgiveness of Allah and the paradise of Allah of which the width is the width of the heavens and the earth prepared for the muttaqin. Who are the muttaqun? The muttaqun are those الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ Those who spend in, e in, in times of ease and hardship. Meaning whether they have or not, they spend in times of ease and hardship. Especially with Ramadan coming up. Every time, right after Tarawih prayer, before Tarawih prayer, in the middle of Tarawih prayer, every other day, or you know, this group comes, that group comes, they were looking, looking for money for orphans, money for this country, that country, and then all of a sudden, for this school, and that school, for this masjid, and that masjid, and you say to yourself, when is that? Well, who did I give to? I already gave to Syria. I already gave to Bangladesh. I already gave to this, and I already gave to that school. Well, what else is left? I don't have anything else left. What do you want? What else do you want? Can we just pray? Right, sometimes you might not say that, but don't you like think about it sometimes? Well, what should you do in that case? Who do you give to? Everybody's asking, who do you give to? Well, the answer is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the believers, the people of Jannah. And from that which we have given to them, they spend. That's your answer. That means as long as you still have money in your pocket, continue to give. As long as you still have money in the bank account, continue to give. Continue to give. In times of hardship and in times of ease, and Allah will continue to give you more. You will not lose anything. Allah will increase it for you all the time. And that's with the sign of a believer that he loves for his brother what he loves even more for himself to the point where even the brothers in Syria, the brothers in whatever country, when they're in need, he also helps them. No matter what organization, where they're coming from, whether it be from Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, no matter where it is, he realizes that their success 
as a Muslim organization calling to Allah is my success as a Muslim. And so you spend in the way of Allah as long as Allah is still giving you that opportunity. Notice I said opportunity. That's not a burden. It's an opportunity. When you have the money, no matter what it is, even if it's a little bit, just give. And then he says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّحْرَةِ وَالْضَّغَةِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْنُ Those who hold back their anger. When they get angry, why do they hold back their anger? Because they want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, وَالْعَفِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who forgive. But part of loving for the sake of Allah is learning to forgive. But you know sometimes, and you, so you know this is the people, and these are the characteristics of the people of Jannah, right? And so, but sometimes, you know how difficult it is sometimes when a brother or a sister says something about you? Sometimes you go to sleep and you can't even sleep. And you just say to yourself, wait until we get to judge, we get to the day of judgment. Right? You say to that person, wait till the day of judgment. Ya Allah, take care of them on the day of judgment. Right? You know what? It's always better for you to forgive. But you say, well, it's difficult. I can't even go to sleep. How dare that sister say that about me? Right? And you lose sleep over it. And you're like, oh. You want, to be, you want me to teach you how to do it? How to forgive? Let me tell you how to forgive. When you go to sleep, every night I want you to forgive all of those who have harmed you. And when I say forgive, I mean really forgive, okay? Not when you're angry again, you can remember you did this and that, uh, uh, uh. no. Don't even mention it again. Because when you forgive for the sake of Allah, you forgive and forget. Okay? Because you want the, the pleasure of Allah. When you're sincere, you do it for the sake of Allah only. You don't bring it back. You don't hurt somebody with that again, ever. And so, when you're going to sleep, and you can't forgive the other brother or other sister, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you want paradise? Forgive, and inshallah you, if Allah says forgive and you have paradise, or you want to keep that and take care of it on the day of judgment? Which one would you do? You want paradise? You want Jannah? Those are the characteristics of the people of Jannah. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And then the next day I want you to do something good for them. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُسِينِينَ Allah loves those who do good. Not only do you just ignore them, well, I forgave them already, I just don't want to talk to them anymore. No, I want you to forgive them and do good with them. Bring them together and be kind and buy them a gift or something. Follow it up with that. Who, who are the people who can do that? Can you do it? Can you humanly do that? You can't do that unless it's for the sake of Allah. Unless you're seeking the reward from Allah because the reward of Allah is greater than anything you will get from anyone else. And so I want you to seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what loving for the sake of Allah is. I don't know you. You don't even speak the same language. But you're a Muslim. You believe in Allah. And I love you for the sake of Allah. And I hope when you love each other for the sake of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you together on the day of judgment. Because on the day of judgment, when the people in the hellfire are in the hellfire and the people of paradise were in, the, in paradise, there will be groups of Muslims who used to hang around with each other and they will get together and they will discuss the affairs that happened in this world and they will look at each other and they will say, hey, you know we have a couple of faces missing here. We have a couple of faces missing here. And they will ask Allah, Ya Allah, where is such and such? Where is such and such? And they will be told that that person is in the hellfire. And they will say, Ya Allah, they used to pray with us. They used to make hajj with us. They used to fast with us. Can we, and can we help them out? We want to be with them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up so that they can see. And he says, go look. And whoever you find amongst your group over there, go ahead and take them out. And then they will take them out the intercession of their bodies. And that's why I want you to hang around with good people. So don't hang around with bad people. Hang around with good people. Because the good people love each other for the sake of Allah. 
and they will be joined on the Day of Judgment because of their love for the sake of Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as He has joined us here tonight to also join us in the highest love of paradise with the prophets and messengers. And the Salihin, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Wa Jazakumullahu Khairan, Wa Sallallahu Ala Nabeen Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sallam.